What's up, Oiler Nation? I'm Brandon Emsweller with UFTV Sports, and welcome to another edition of Coach's Corner. And today, a few weeks ago, we did talk to head coach of the Lady Oilers, Jim Weedy, and now it's going to be the same story. We're going to stay in basketball. We're with head coach Charlie Ernst. Charlie, thank you for coming on. I appreciate today. it. Thank you, Brandon. And let's just, you know, let's just go over some of these games that you've had these past few weeks. Like last week uh, on Monday, Wayne State, a phenomenal game. I was actually in the radio station listening to it. It was a phenomenal game. Just explain, you know, what your take was on that game. Well, that was our third game in, in five days. So, you know, as a coach, you're going into that game unsure about what your energy level is going to be like. That was the day that school was canceled here at Finley, so we had to readjust our routine. Uh, but I give our players a lot of credit. Energy was not a problem up in Detroit on Monday night. Uh, we led most of the game, uh, not by much, uh, but late in the game, they got away from us a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, we just struggled to cons score consistently. I thought our defense was pretty good all night. Uh, however, Elijah Colleg, a freshman, <laughs> stepped up in the last minute and a half and hit a pair of threes uh, to get the game to overtime. When we got to overtime, I felt good about our chances because we had played nine guys double-digit minutes. Wayne State, on the other hand, had two players that hadn't sat out the entire game. And I think fatigue set in in overtime. We got the lead early. We, we controlled the tip, got the lead, and I think we led the entire overtime period. It was a really good win for us. Yeah, and I just noticed in that, in that overtime period, because I think towards the end, it kind of looked like it was slipping a little bit away. But then Elijah Collick comes in, saves it, and then overtime, what did you have to tell your guys going to overtime to keep a decent lead against this Wayne State team that gives us a lot of trouble? Well, I think you have a couple things going for you there. I think number one, we had momentum because we got to overtime. I think there's always a little bit of a relief. How, you know, but you have to be careful as a coach because you don't want that relief to turn to complacency. But I think our guys came out hungry. And like I said, we got the tip and we scored on our first possession, which is always important in overtime. It's, it's even more important in the beginning of the game. So we got the tip, we got a score, we got the lead. Then we got another defensive stop. In fact, Wayne State did not score in the last two minutes of regulation or the first three minutes of overtime. So they went on a five minute drought. In that time span, uh, we were able to break away from a little bit. So moving on from that game, you guys move on to Ohio Dominican, where previous in the season, it was a difficult loss for you guys. Um, and for this game, I mean, you guys took Ohio Dominican completely out of it. I mean, it was a phenomenal game. Offense, offense was better than Wayne State. D just describe. Well, you know, we, Coach Chardo does a really good job of working with our guys. We decided early in the season uh, to put in a motion offense. And in motion offense, you, you leave a lot of the decisions on your players. And they're reads. They're instant reads that have to be made within a game. And it's taken our guys some time. Uh, but we're getting better. Ohio Dominican, uh, in Ohio Dominican, that was our first game of repeating a South Division opponent. So this is the first game all season we've played an opponent we had previously paid, played. So there's, you know, there's adjustments that are being made on both ends. Um, and I thought the adjustments we made were good. But probably more than anything, we didn't play very hard, mm -hmm. didn't compete as hard as we needed to in Columbus several weeks ago. Having them at home, having lost previously, our guys came out and played with a lot more energy. And what I noticed from this game, the facilitating of the ball was a little bit better, and also your most of your players averaged in double digits that game. But I think the thing that pops out the most to me, 42 rebounds. How key was that in this game? Well, it's probably our most improved area over the last three or four weeks is rebounding. If I point to two things, I would point to rebounding and decision making on offense. I think those are the two things we've improved upon the most. And I think both of them were highlighted in that game against Ohio Dominican. So you guys move on from Ohio Dominican on to Tiffin. So between Thursday and Saturday on that Friday, what were you telling your guys to prepare for Tiffin, who basically is our a big time rival for us and you guys are going to the Dragons layer. What do you have to tell your guys? Because I know you're playing Monday, 
you get Tuesday, Wednesday, you play Thursday, and then you get one break. What were you telling your guys? Well, I've always said that those sort of games are, are games that your leaders have to really lead. You know, our younger guys have never been to Tiffin. You know, they, they don't know what it's going to be like. It's easy to get caught up in the records. But I think our players have done a really nice job, especially our captains, of keeping our team focused and understanding there is no such thing as an easy win in this conference, especially on the road. And uh, I thought our guys came out. We played hard. We set the tone early, uh, mostly predicated on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, scored, I think, at halftime, Tiffin had 19. But they had 11 points with, I think, three minutes to play in the first half. Yeah. And that's a credit to our team. Tiffin's a team that likes to press. They like to rat. As I always tell te our, our team when we play pressing teams, if they can't score, they can't press. You know, and in both games that we played Tiffin this year, they had a hard time establishing any consistency on the offensive end in the first half, and therefore we didn't have to face their press. And I think uh, uh, that alone was a big factor on Saturday. And you mentioned how they scored 11 points before halftime within a short period of time. Well, in the second half, they did come back within 10. You know, what, was, what, what, what did you have to tell your players? Because I knew that the facilitation of the bar was a little bit different. Offense was a little bit hard. You know, how did you have to pull this game away? Well, Tiffin played a more desperate style in the second half. They decided to, to rat, rat around, trap, uh, make or miss. They, they just decided to make it uh, kind of a helter-skelter game. It was difficult, difficult for us to execute a half-court offense. So we had to just sort of play. And I think our guys, we knew Tiffin would make a run at us. They're playing on their home floor. They have a lot of pride. And they did, but we answered, you know, we made free throws. Uh, John Staley had some big offensive rebounds uh, that he converted. You know, so it was really a, a, a team effort. But we knew Tiffin would make a run at us. But, you know, we, we did what we needed to do to hang on. And you mentioned John Staley. He had a phenomenal game. Uh, 20 points, uh, you know, how key was John during this game? Well, you know, yeah, people see his points, and those were important. But I think even more than his points were his rebounds. And probably most importantly, he had two uh, loose ball saves that he saved the ball, typical John Staley style. Uh, he had blood on his knees. He had a big wound on his hip. Uh, but that's the way John plays. And he's an inspiration and an energy giver to our team. And I think... Uh, you know, the more guys that, that, you know, embrace the way John plays, that's something that I think just helps the energy and enthusiasm of our entire team. That's what John brings to our team. And uh, definitely, John is probably one of the most aggressive players on that team. But how big of a leader is he on this team? Because I think his lead leadership is key for the Oilers right now. It is, and I think our seniors are doing a great job of leading. The way John leads is usually by example. I mean, he's not a quiet guy, but uh, I would say he's truly a guy that leads by example, not just what you see on game night, but his approach in practice every day is really no different than what you see on game night. It's the way he lives his life. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's going hard with everything he does. He takes no shortcuts. And uh, I'm just glad he's on our team and not <laughs> someone I'm playing against. I'm definitely glad he is on our team. And also, I think two players that have stepped up their game as freshmen, Nick Ruth Satz and Elijah Colleg. You know, maybe discuss how their, their play from the beginning of the season has completely changed to, to February. Yeah. They're just more confident players, not only in what they're able to do, but maybe more so uh, what we see their role as on our own team. And I think with Nick in particular, he, you know, being a point guard, the responsibility he has on both ends is big. And so we, we have big expectations for him. Have to be careful we don't wear those guys out. They've both played a lot of minutes for freshmen. Uh, Elijah has made a lot of big shots, has had some great shooting nights, but probably the biggest thing that I'm impressed with with him is his consistency on defense, you know, and he, his ability to take care of the ball. I think he has single digit turnovers on the season, which is very impressive for a freshman. And I think the other freshman I'd mention is Terrence Sullivan. You know, he's not a starter, but he comes off the bench and he plays a very important role off the bench and he's continued to improve. He, 
he's a, at a bit of a disadvantage in that he missed the first six weeks of the season. So, you know, he's had to learn sort of on the run. Those guys had the benefit of all of October to kind of get into the flow of things. He didn't have that benefit, but he's really come on as of late. He's playing a key role on this team. Now, so from the player's side, you know, what have you learned about your team from these past few games? I mean, I'm pretty sure you've learned a lot. Well, I think the thing that we've all learned is, number one, what our style of play needs to be to be successful. Uh, we've, we were searching for that for probably the first 14 games of the season. I think number two, our players understanding their role. You know, what, what's a good shot? What's a good decision? How aggressive should they be? Um, you know, it, it takes time for all of those things to happen. And I think number three, we've settled in on a rotation. And I think, uh, you know, we, we spent most of this season trying to figure that out. I think a lot of guys were kind of caught up in were they getting enough shots? Were they getting enough playing time? How's this guy playing compared to how I'm playing? Um, but, but now, now that we've won some games, we've won them decisively. I think the players have bought in and now they're just focused on playing as hard as they can mm -hmm. for the time they have yep. and doing as well as they can. And when you get a group of nine guys, 10 guys focused on that, it's a pretty powerful thing. And so from that, you guys now move on to two more games Thursday and Saturday. You know, what type of preparation are you going to have to do? You know, because Ashland's Thursday. Yeah, and, and of course, we didn't play very well at Ashland. That was far and away our worst game of the season. And give Ashland some credit because they, they shot the ball extremely well. They rebounded it and they shared the ball. Three things we didn't do that night. We're going to have to do all three of them uh, this Thursday. But, you know, this week is the first time we've had preparation time in practice to improve our game. Uh, you know, we went just finished a stretch of five games in 10 days. Uh, we had one day of preparation between before all of those games. So really you're focused on your opponent more so than you're focused on yourself. Well, these last couple days, we've been able to focus a little bit on ourselves and fix areas that need fixing and, and not so much. What do we have to do to beat Ashland? What we have to do, we know, and we will prepare for that here in the next day or two. But it's been nice getting back to what does Finley have to do to get better? And that's really what, what our focus has been. So after these two games, what, is, what do you guys have to do? I know you're probably going to say win, but what do you have to do to get into that GLIAC tournament? Well, we do have to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, but I, I think continue to be consistent on defense. I think one thing we've eliminated is the no-brainer, easy baskets that we gave up early in the year. And part of that's rebounding. So we've been able to eliminate those areas. Teams have had to score over top of us. They've had to earn their points. So we have to continue to do that. I think we have to make sure that we continue to share the ball, have a good complement of, of inside buckets, getting to the free throw line, driving to the basket, complementing our three-point game. Early in the year, we relied too much on our three-point shooting. Over the last four weeks, we've complemented that. So we have to continue to do that. And I think finally, we have to rebound the ball. You know. It was a big uh, weakness of this team for the first, uh, you know, I'd say the first half of the season. But uh, I think only once in the last seven games have we been out rebounded. And that was uh, maybe by two or three rebounds. So we've rebounded the ball better. So for, if we can do those three things, I don't see any reason why not only that we shouldn't make the GLIAC tournament, but that we can't win the South Division and we can't get a good seed for the GLIAC tournament because that's important too. Coach, I greatly appreciate you coming on today, and that's going to do it here for Coach's Corner. Once again, I'm Brandon Emsweller with UFTV Sports.